Good morning. Welcome to worship today. Uh, we are celebrating Palm Sunday this morning, so grateful we get to do that. Uh, for those who are listening on the radio, I'm Pastor Aaron Bovendam, and sharing the message today is Pastor Dennis Preston, so grateful for him. Also grateful for all those helping with worship, for our AV team, for our greeters and our ushers, and of course our musicians, for Tracy and Russ and Crosswalk, who still is pre-recording right now. Our music, hopefully, will be moving away from that soon and be able to do live music, but grateful for your patience as we continue to do that. We get to celebrate Holy Communion again this morning. And for those who are joining on the live stream, you're welcome to join with us if you have crackers or bread, grape juice or wine. Uh, we also had our last drive-by communion this morning for those who weren't comfortable coming in person yet. And then if you haven't tried those small containers, you take off the clear top layer first to get to the bread and then the next layer to get to the grape juice and just be careful you don't squeeze it too hard. We don't have Wednesday evening Lenten services anymore. Those have concluded and there's no confirmation this week, but we do have Holy Week. And so we have Monday, Thursday worship on Thursday at 10 a.m. and at 6.30 p.m. We have 13 youth, third and fourth graders, who were able to take a communion class to learn a little bit more about it. And many of them are gonna be joining in their first communion on Thursday evening at 6.30. So excited to be able to celebrate with them. And for those of you who are able to come to worship at 10 a.m., I would encourage you to do so on Monday, Thursday, just to help spread people out a little bit more. And then we have worship again on Good Friday at 10 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. And we'll have a tenebrae service, so we'll be extinguishing candles. We'll be hearing Jesus' last words on the cross, have some silent meditation and some music. And then next Sunday is Easter Sunday. So we have worship at 8.30 with traditional music, worship at 10.45 with crosswalk music. And then we added a service just again to help spread people out a little more. And that is from 9.45 to 10.15. It's an interactive worship service. It's half an hour long and it's similar to our family worship that we had done in the fall. So I would invite you to consider coming to that as well. I believe those are all of my announcements, and so we begin worship with children's time. And so for children's time today, I just shared, what's the special day today? Palm Sunday, yes, so we have our palm branches, we get to wave, and when Jesus entered into Jerusalem, people waved these palm branches because it was a sign of victory, those were a sign of victory, so they waved them, believing they would have victory in Jesus. And they shout, Hosanna, and we did this in family Sunday school. What does Hosanna mean? Anybody remember? Anyone? That's why we do it again. It means, oh, there, yes. Awesome. They shouted, save us. So they wanted, save us, Jesus. So they shouted, Hosanna, meaning save us. So they call out to Jesus and praise him as a king. But we talked about it in family Sunday school, he's a very different kind of king. And so Jesus, who is our king, we call him the king of the universe or our leader, um, does he wear a crown that's a fancy crown and sit on a fancy throne or what kind of a crown does he wear? Does anybody remember? I have a hint for you. Thorns? Okay, I'm a little hard of hearing. So, all right, thorns. Okay, so he wears a crown of thorns. That's right. So they put a crown of thorns on him, reminding us that Jesus is a very different kind of king. And so what we remember during Holy Week at our Monday, Thursday, and then our Good Friday services is that Jesus died on the cross. And he died because he stood by those who were sad and lonely, who had no one else to, to care for them and stand by them, for those who were innocent and suffered, he stayed right by them. And so even though Jesus' victory looked a lot different than what people expected, we also shout, Hosanna today, save us, Jesus, and we wave our palm branches because we have victory in Jesus over all the bad stuff in this life, and Jesus promises to be with us when we're sad or lonely or going through hard times. So as we begin to sing our opening hymn, as we get to hear that hymn today, I'm going to invite you to please rise, and we're going to wave our palm branches, and the first service really waved them. I was amazed, so we'll see how we do at this service, and those of you who are younger, 
You might need to wave them at some of the adults because they kind of get a little bit lazy in it. So you want to wave your palm branches and wave them at the adults if they kind of slow down. As remember, we have victory in Jesus and we call out, save us, Jesus. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. You are the King of Israel and David's royal son. Now in the Lord's name coming, our King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The company of angels are praising you on high. Creation and all mortals in chorus make reply. Our glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The multitude of pilgrims with palms before you went. Our praise and prayer and anthems before you we present. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. To you before your passion they sang their hymns of praise. To you now high exalted our melody we raise. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Their praises you accepted, accept the prayers we bring. Great author of all goodness, O oh good and gracious King. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King. To whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. Oh, Lord, my 
saying, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 11th chapter. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethlehem and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They, said, uh, they told them that Jesus had, what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Some years ago, a book was written by a noted American historian, and it was called When the Cheering Stops. It's the story of President Woodrow Wilson and the events that were leading up to and following World War I. When that war was over, Wilson was an international hero, and there was a great uh, spirit of optimism around the world. On his first visit to Paris after the war, Wilson was greeted by cheering crowds, and the same thing was true in Italy and in England. And then in Vienna at the hospital, uh, a worker had to tell the children there would be no Christmas presents this year because of the war and the hard times. And the children didn't believe her. They said that President Wilson is coming and they knew that everything would be all right. Now the cheering lasted about a year. When it gradually began to stop, it turned out that after the war, the political re leaders of Europe were more concerned with their own agendas than they were for lasting peace. At home, Woodrow Wilson ran into opposition in the United States Senate, and his League of Nations was not ratified. And under the strain of it all, the president's health began to break. He suffered a stroke, and in the next election, his party was defeated. So it was that Woodrow Wilson, a man who barely a year earlier had heralded, was heralded as the New World Messiah, his, it came to an end, the end of his days, a broken and defeated man. How quickly public opinion can change and how quickly leaders can abandon, be abandoned by the crowds. President Wilson was not the first or the last to experience opposition to his leadership or 
to be deserted by the crowds. Jesus, too, as you know, was abandoned by the Palm Sunday crowds. At the beginning of his ministry, as word got out about his miracles, the crowds came, the people were excited. When he tried to go off, and when he would try to go off by himself to pray and to rest, people would still follow and try to seek him out. And crowds lined the street on that day as he entered Jerusalem. They waved the palm branches and spread before him the branches and cloaks on the street. And they shouted, Hosanna! And there was excitement and expectation. Was now the time? Would this Jesus really raise up an army and throw off the chains of Rome? Anticipation was high. But how long would the cheering last? We'll pick up the story after the following music. It may be the most sudden and drastic reversals of all in history. On Sunday, they praised Jesus and called him their savior. Five days later, he was hanging on a cross and was deserted by the crowds. During that week, following the entry into Jerusalem, Jesus was busy teaching in the temple. The religious leaders, day after day, tried to challenge him, but they did not succeed. Jesus avoids the traps that they try to set with their words. Then Judas begins his uh, desertion by going to the chief priests and arranges for a plan to have Jesus arrested. Jesus gathers with his disciples then for the Passover meal. And at this meal, he tells his followers, this bread, this is my body, this wine, this is my blood. Do this to remember me. After the meal, as Jesus and the disciples walked to the Mount of Olives to pray, along the way, Jesus tells his followers, you will all become my deserters, but after I'm raised up, I will meet you in Galilee. They can't believe it. What does this mean? They don't have a clue, especially the part about when I meet you in Galilee. Being raised from the dead is totally out of their realm of imagination. Peter tells Jesus, even though everyone else deserts you, I will not. Jesus tells Peter that before the next morning, before the rooster crows two times, you will have denied me three times. Peter responds, no way, even if I have to die, I'll never deny you, Jesus. And when they come to the place called Gethsemane, Jesus prays about what is about to happen. He asks the disciples to watch and pray with him. What do they do? They fall asleep three times. They desert him by falling asleep. Next came the arrest. Judas betrays Jesus with the proper kiss of greeting between a rabbi and his student. Jesus is arrested, and all the disciples desert. Although Peter follows to the courtyard of the high priest, there he's asked, aren't you from Galilee? Aren't you one of Jesus' followers? And what does Peter do? He deserts. I don't know the man. And three times, Peter denies having ever known Jesus. Peter had early, earlier heard Jesus say, anyone who did not denies me will have no part of me in eternity. Peter wept bitterly. Wouldn't you? Jesus is also deserted by the religious authorities. They conspire to put Jesus to death. 
they hand him over to Pilate and whip up the crowds to demand that Jesus be crucified. And that's where we pick up the story as Jesus carries the cross through the streets. They compelled a passerby who was coming in, in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As Jesus is taken down and hung, as Jesus is taken and hung on the cross, where are the disciples? They're hiding. They've all deserted. Only some women have the courage to stand and watch. Where did the crowds from Sunday go? How many of them stood crying, crucify him? And how about you and me? In our baptism, Jesus said to us, will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Evangelist Bailey Smith, he tells a fictional story about a man who happened to be a carpenter at the time of Jesus' crucifixion. His wife suggested to him one day that the Roman gov government was advertising for carpenters to make a bid on crosses that they used for execution. They could sure use the extra money, she reminded him. The carpenter was reluctant to sell his skill to perpetuate such barbarity, but she pressed her point using the arguments that we all have used. We can use the money, she said, and if you don't, somebody else will. Some weeks later, in that same house, a boy was crying. Son, what's wrong? his parents asked. I was in the market, said the boy, and coming down the street, I saw a big crowd. I went to look, and I saw Jesus. His father asked, do you mean the Jesus that we've loved? The Jesus that we've always thought was a good man? 
who taught good things? Yes, sir, that's the man, the boy replied. I saw Jesus, and Papa, he was carrying our cross, a cross we made right here in our shop. We made the cross that Jesus was carrying. They're going to kill Jesus on the cross we made. No, son, said his father. You know that there are other people who have made crosses. That was not our cross. Oh, Papa, it is our cross, the boy cried. The cross that we made right here in our shop. Son, son, calm down, said his father. Son, how do you know? The boy replied somberly. Papa, do you remember when that man came by and wanted you to build cabinets? Yes, son, I remember, said his father. Do you remember when you and that man started talking in the other room, asked the boy? Yes, son. Papa, I went out into the shop where we had left that cross we'd just finished. I looked at that cross that we had made, and I put my name on it. Papa, as I was in that great crowd of people today, I saw Jesus coming by. And just when Jesus got even with me, he fell, and that cross we had made crushed his shoulders. Papa, I know it was our cross, because when Jesus fell right at my feet, I looked at that cross, and there was my name. There was my name that I had put there. The boy straightened himself up, and he said, Papa, do you understand what I'm saying? My name was on that cross. Bailey Smith goes on to remind us that our name is on that cross too. Jesus' death was brought about by our betrayal, our deserting Jesus. That's what sin is. It's the betrayal of the trust that God has invested in each of us it's the failure to love others as he has loved us. And there's not one of us that's free from that betrayal. But betrayal and desertion is not where the story ends. Jesus was deserted by his followers, but God outwitted them. Jesus said to the disciples, you will all become deserters, but..." After I'm raised up, I will meet you in Galilee. We have all find, found ways to desert Jesus, but God outwits us as well. Meet me in Galilee, Jesus says. Death and desertion doesn't have the last word. Resurrection, forgiveness, and new life, those are the last words. Meet me in Galilee. Meet me in prayer and scripture and service, loving as I have loved you. You have deserted me, Jesus said, but I will never desert you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, today we welcome you as a victorious king the one who comes in the name of the Lord. By Friday, we will see you crowned with thorns and enthroned on the cross. Thank you for walking the path we cannot walk. What looks like defeat is your victory. Keep our eyes focused on the glory of suffering love. In your name we pray. Amen.
greatest gain I count but loss and for contempt on all my pride. See from his head, his hands, his such love and sorrow me for thorns composed so rich a crown oh the wonderful cross oh the wonderful cross bids me come and die and find my soul, my life, my all. Oh, the wonderful cross, oh, the wonderful cross, bids me come and die and find that I truly live. to please rise as we confess our faith through an early confession in the Christian church from Philippians chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. You may be seated as we have a time of prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, we rely on your promises. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. 
Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O oh God. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world in all nations. Instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O oh God. God, on the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or those who are bullied. Accompany all who suffer. We especially hold in prayer all those on our prayer list. And we hold in prayer those in our hearts and minds now. Grant each one of them respite and renewal. Hear us, O God. God, you called followers to tend to Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, and all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O God. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such a faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God. Gracious God, we entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. At this time, uh, we get to share peace with one another, and so we won't move around the sanctuary, but you'll share a sign of peace however you're comfortable, and then I would encourage you to extend that peace beyond our sanctuary and send a note or give a call speaking Jesus' peace to people beyond our, ourselves. And so the peace of the Lord be with you always. And at this time, even though we don't pass our offering plates, we do give thanks for the ways that all of you are able to share generously both of the resources that you've given for the ministry of our church, but also in our community, and also the way you give of your time and your energy and your gifts to just do God's work both through our church and in our larger community. So let us pray. Gracious God, you are a God of abundance. Help us to trust that fully in every area of our lives. We ask that you would fill us with gratitude for what you've placed in our care and move us to generously share out of it to be a blessing in your world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. As we get ready for communion, I invite you to please rise, and I'll ask you to hold up your cup as we hear the words of institution, and you will not open it until after the Lord's Prayer. You may hold up your cup now. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. May lower your cups as we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and as you do so, you may open that top clear layer, and then open the next layer, and hear that this is the body and blood of Christ given for you. And for any children who don't yet commune, you can hear this blessing. Jesus loves you and is always with you. Amen.
Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit, that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to please rise as you hear the blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lead on, O King Eternal, till sin's fierce war shall cease, and holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords loud clashing, nor roll of stirring drums, but deeds of love and mercy, the heavenly kingdom comes. Lead on, O King eternal, we follow not with fears, for gladness breaks like morning where'er your face appears. Your cross is lifted o'er us, we journey in its light. The crown awaits the conquest, lead on, O God of might. We were meant to be 
Even the rocks cry out, even the heavens shout at the sound of His holy name. So let every voice sing out, let every knee bow down, He's worthy of all our praise. You and I are made to worship, you and I are called to love, you and I are forgiven and free. surrender. You and I choose to believe. You and I will see. You and I are made to worship. You and I are called to love. You and I are forgiven and free. Now go in peace and share the good news.